So thank you to Kate and all the speakers for illustrating the potential for local action to create systemic change and for inspiring us to reimagine a better world and a more sustainable future. Before we break for lunch, it is my honor to introduce Hank Rogers, founder of Blue Planet Alliance and Ambassador Samuel of T T Tuvayu. Welcome. I guess I'll start off. Um, I just want everybody to understand um, that there's no question that we are doing this. We are going to fix climate change. Uh, people ask me if I have hope, and the answer is no, I don't have hope, I have determination. Because we're doing this. So um, in 2016, I, I had the pleasure of visiting um, a beautiful little island called Tuvalu. And uh, with me is uh, Ambassador Samuelo from uh, uh, Tuvalu. And, and Ambassador, maybe you can tell us a little bit about Tuvalu, and then I'll talk a little bit about my trip. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Hanks. It's a good question, because I need to, to talk about Tuvalu before it sinks. Uh, so Tuvalu is a small country uh, halfway between uh, Hawaii and Australia. Uh, it's a... A uh, member of the Pacific Island Forum. Uh, no more than 26 uh, kilometers square, 11,000 people. We are a member of the United Nations, so we have the same uh, vote, uh, power, powerful votes as the United States and China. But, uh, but I, I'm here to attend the COP, so uh, I think I'll talk about uh, Tuvalu in terms of the, our extreme vulnerability to climate change. Uh, Tuvalu is one of the three atoll nations in the Pacific, the other two being um, the Republic of the Marshall Islands and Kiribati. We are atoll nations. What it means is we are no more than two meters above sea level. And uh, how we uh, address climate change and our vulnerability to climate change is really driven by the existential threat of uh, uh, sea level rise. The IPCC uh, report uh, published last year uh, predicted our total inundations within this century. So that is uh, I think the context that should be understood when small island developing states, especially atoll nations, uh, speaks of the urgency and the help that they need. So, uh, and I think when we speak of uh, a total submersion as a result of sea level rise, we have to also acknowledge and understand that before uh, a, 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 a country is really entirely submerged, you know, uh, uh, the land will uh, be unable to sustain life. So before total submersion of an atoll nation, the land will become uninhabitable, uh, even decades before that. So when the IPCC said uh, our total uh, inundation within this century, we are, I think we are looking at the next 30, 40 years, not 2,100. Uh, so that is why we... Uh, engaging and, and, and doing whatever we have, uh, and we have a huge delegation, 31 people uh, from 11,000 people that are here in the COP, uh, really to uh, simply save our, our island, our people, our heritage, and our identity. Thank you. So I, um, I, I w was fortunate enough to get to go to Tuvalu in uh, 2016. And let me describe Tuvalu a little bit from the viewpoint of a visitor. Um, the main island has a runway down the middle. And that is like their version of Central Park. It's, it's the runway. It's where everything happens. All the people get together on the runway and play rugby or ride bicycles or whatever. It's, it's the park area. Twice a week a plane comes, 
a, a, a fire engine goes up and down the, uh, the runway with the siren on, making sure that everybody knows that the plane is coming, don't come on the runway right now. And uh, so we landed, and again, we were there for a few days. Um, I, I went snorkeling to see what the coral looked like, and it was a disaster. It had been, uh, uh, this was after a, a hurricane, and so the coral in the lagoon was, was destroyed completely. Um, I was devastated by this. Um, and I looked at the island, you know, and like a quarter of the island is landfill. I don't know how big that landfill is. It's huge. But you know, this is the problem of all islands. They bring stuff to the islands, and then there's no way for the stuff to leave the island. And so they end up with a garbage problem. But I'm not here to talk about the garbage, of, uh, the garbage problem today. Um, I have a foundation working to end the use of carbon-based fuel. Um, we did it in Hawaii, where Hawaii is on track. And uh, now I'm, I'm shifted to doing it for the islands. Uh, first of all, island country. We have to do it for the rest of the world. But the island countries are the most vulnerable and they're most, uh, how can I say, they're, they're suffering the most from the high price of, of, um, uh, of carbon-based fuel. And so um, our, in Hawaii, we have a mandate for 100% renewable energy by 2045. We would like all other islands, uh, all other countries to adopt the same mandate. Because if you don't have a, a deadline, nothing's going to happen. Then it's just talk. So, Ambassador, I, I went to visit you uh, in New York, uh, this is like last week. Something or two weeks ago, just just recently, and uh, um, I asked you about your you know, uh, Tuvalu's uh, commitment. Can you talk a little bit about Tuvalu's commitment? Yes. So uh, after the Paris Agreement, uh, Tuvalu uh, agreed to a 100% renewable energy by 2025. Uh, that again. Is, is really because we are extremely vulnerable to climate change and everything has to be done in, in agency. Uh, so that was driven uh, by our uh, extreme vulnerability to climate change, so 2025. Uh, however, we have uh, found out that uh, it was pretty, quite, quite uh, a task to, to achieve that. Uh, one is COVID has made everything uh, difficult. But one of the, the challenges that we have always had as small island uh, atoll nations of 11,000 people is that uh, it's, it's the difficulty of attracting investment uh, in a small market. Uh, so we have uh, power companies uh, and interest that comes into our region. They would rather go to uh, other, our other bigger uh, member countries than, than to invest in a small island country of 11,000 people. Uh, so, so that is the, the, the challenge that we have. Uh, now we have uh, updated uh, our NDC and we have extended the 100% renewable target to uh, be reached at uh, the year 2030. Now uh, that is still uh, a challenge but uh, we have invested, we have uh, the partnership of uh, the, the World Bank and the Asian Development Bank that we think can uh, scale, can, can bring that scale that we need. Uh, but so far, the, the partnerships by next year will help Tuvalu reach 40% of uh, our renewable energy. Uh, so 60% is, is still, uh, uh, a challenge that we are uh, here to also uh, advocate and, 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 and seek partnerships that, that can help and, and, and really address that uh, the challenge of scale. And I'm, uh, I, I think I'm encouraged by the, the discussions and the, the conversation that has been happening in COPS and, and in particular with uh, the Blue Planet uh, Alliance uh, to trying and, and, and help us move in that direction and, and hopefully uh, achieve 100% uh, renewable by 2030. Actually, um, <clears throat> I, was, um, I was shocked to hear that they had to move their, their goal. And uh, so I've been working with uh, uh, another organization called Mana Pacific. Is anybody here from Mana Pacific? No. 
Uh, but we are working to see if we can't do it anyway by 2025. You know, we're talking about 11,000 people. This is not the biggest job in the world. Um, and I'd, I'd really like to see if we can't meet the original deadline. So we put Hawaii on track for uh, 2045. But actually, Hawaii is now acting. First of all, the, the utility has said that they can do it by 2040. And second of all, we incentivize them by changing their business model. And they're acting like they're going to do it by 2035. So the idea is to put a, a deadline in the future and then work to see how quickly, how far ahead of that deadline we can actually you know, hit it. And we would like to see Tuvalu do the same thing. I'd just like to finish. You know, I was on a panel um, in Hawaii, and they, I said, we're going to go 100% renewable by 2045. And the guy next to me on the panel said, I'm a professor at the university, and uh, this is what I study. And there's no way we can go 100% by 2045. And uh, it's like, well, OK, what do I say? I grabbed the, the mic back, and I said, well, I'm not as smart as this guy, so we're going to do it anyway. So that's the message to the world. We're going to do it anyway. No matter what happens in the room at COP, we're going to do it anyway. We're going to fix everything. Thank you very much.